What's up, everybody? I'm TJ. And I'm Kelsey. And we are the, the Nashville, Nashville Wine Duo. Duo. Dicey's Tavern mm -hmm. in WeHo. What? Wedgwood, Houston. Wedgwood, Wedgwood Houston. Houston. Wedgwood, Houston. We are here. Yes, we're so excited. We have the man, Charlie, the beverage director for Dicey's with us today. Hello. From Chicago. That's right. Don't hold it against me. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me love you even more because I'm you, from Chicago. So we love it. Yeah, we love it. We, we are Chicago bond. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so we were actually driving down 65. We saw a huge billboard for Dicey's and then we saw the natural wine on the sign. Yes. And uh, we put it out there on Instagram and everybody was like, this is one of the best places to get pizza in Nashville. The response Freaking from out. the people was unbelievable. How many yes. people have tried Dicey's? Yeah. So um, it's so actually the best place to get pizza in Nashville. Not even one of. It's the best place for pizza. In the best. <laughs> and after trying it, we believe that. Oh my gosh, 100%. Yeah. So describe, um, yeah, the neighborhood where we are, when y'all got here, how y'all got here. How did we get here? Oh. Just divine inspiration. Um, we're in Wedgwood, Houston, 425 Chestnut. Um, this neighborhood is coming up quick. Um, I'm looking out the window at the uh, left-handed guitar across yep. the street. <laughs> and just beyond that, there's about 400 condos that are being built as we speak. Um, we've been in the neighborhood for a while. We opened in 2022, but we've had the property for few years and it has been just booming. People are just coming out of the woodwork now. Out of the Wedgwood. Out of the, <laughs> out of the Wedgwood. Out of the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we love it. We love it here. Uh, we're right next to the train tracks. You get choo-choo trains coming by. Yeah, it's got a lot of character in here. Like, you know, even before we did this too, they got these red cups that kind of remind you of like Pizza Hut back when it was like really cool. Um, lots of just natural wine, open space, amazing pizza. You get this cool view of outside, train tracks rolling by. It just has a, it has a vibe, like a good vibe. Yeah, how'd you guys come up with the concept for this? How did we? I don't know. I mean, pizza, who doesn't like pizza? I don't know. We came up with the concept of pizza, but we pizza definitely in Nashville. we identified. Well, you know, you identify a uh, need that needs to be filled. Yeah. Right. And no offense to Nashville, we love it here. Yeah. But pizza game lacking. So were you guys coming here, traveling to Nashville from Chicago, and being like, Nashville really needs like a pizza joint? Yes. Wow. Okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself, like how you got into this, about your. Yeah, how you get into your job that you're doing now? Uh, well, you know, like most people, you didn't want to do regular work. Start working in a restaurant because it's easy money and, you know, fast friends and party times and you get to stay up late and sleep in. And then all of a sudden I started becoming responsible and here I am. I, uh, I started with the company 13 years ago at a little place called Longman and Eagle in Chicago. Uh, so what were you doing there? You I was a bar. I you was a bartender. I was a bartender. Yeah. Um, they almost didn't want to hire me at first, and then opening night, they were like, "Oh yeah, we don't have enough bartenders." So uh, my buddy was GMing, and he, he gave me a call, and I showed up, and that's that. Uh, worked there for two and a half years, three years, and then um, uh, they, uh, a couple of the owners of. Longman and Eagle went on to open a place called Parsons. Uh, it was a chicken joint, and they tapped me to run the beverage program. Uh, I did the frozen Negroni. Uh, that was hugely popular. We sold a million of them, and then they're like, "Well, pandemic hit," and they started expanding my role. So uh, here I am, 13 years later, uh, still with the same guys, uh, and uh, this is our. 
13th spot. 13th. Wow. Yeah, we got a, we got a lot of properties. We got yeah. Longman and Eagle, four Parsons uh, restaurants in Chicago. Uh, it's about to be two Lonesome Rose. Um, Lonesome Rose is our Tex-Mex uh, spot, and then we've got a um, uh, got a spot in Austin in the Thompson Hotel called Wax Myrtle. Uh, we have the second floor of the Chicago Athletic Association Hotel in Chicago on Michigan Avenue. Now, what am I missing? That's about it. Wow. Yeah. And you know what I love though that you started out like as a as a bartender. I'm sorry, that's like really cool. Like, you know, I work at a grocery store or at Trader Joe's and like, we're the, you know, we're doing these middle class jobs and mm -hmm. sometimes you don't really think like people in these positions are gonna like move up the way you have and like have this job. Like, I don't know. I just think that that's really. All right. Well, that was a nice segue into us talking. Yeah, so we were extremely disappointed and really angry at ourselves even though it wasn't completely our fault it was technology's fault but it basically it recorded like five minutes and then it said it said it was continuing to yeah record. we just had a bunch of technical difficulties i don't know if it was wi-fi i don't know what was going on but we uh charlie was so cool to sit there and record the podcast twice with us <laughs> yeah and then and, the second uh, time we thought we we, we walked away with like five minutes of footage that yeah. we could use and so, i'm not kidding it really it actually it gave tj like a stomach ache like he was like oh, i was sick to my stomach for like two days about yep. it because charlie was so cool he came in to see us to do this podcast yep it just was it honestly felt like one of our first really big deal podcasts and I think that's what made it even more. I mean, they've all been a big deal. You yeah, know but I, mean? I think with Charlie, it was effortless. Like we, like I told him, I texted him and told him about what happened. And I was like, it just felt like we were hanging out with a friend and we, it was effortless. The conversation and just how we were talking about Dicey's and his, his career and just fun stuff, families yeah. and everything. It was just like a normal friendship conversation mm -hmm. that was going on and it was really fun. And then to walk away with no footage, like really available. Um, yeah. Cause it, it was just, it was so well, fun. And the whole experience and, was like, we were there, you know, doing the podcast. You could hear the people doing the dishes in the background and moving yeah. around. It just, it was like, I don't know. And it, we just had all this new equipment. So that was the other thing too. TJ got a lot of new equipment because he was like, come on, I need to step up my game with this podcast. Both yeah. of us feel like that. And we don't know if that was part of the technical difficulties, but then literally what you said yesterday, he worked out and let it record for the whole time and it was fine. Yeah. So I don't know what the issue was, but Charlie, we love you. We appreciate your time. We just really wanted to take this podcast to showcase Dicey's. Yes. The amazing food that they... Uh, have there we were blown away yeah. by just the menu the um, staff there was so accommodating and nice um, knowledgeable but the food the pizzas they do well, subs. And best of all for the wine oh and the natural wines is what really kind of when we saw that billboard on 65 mm -hmm. talking about natural wines that's really what drew us in to be like hey we gotta check out this place yeah and i think the combination of natural wine with pizza i mean sure there's some funky you know places that are doing some natural wine trying to showcase it but like this is like they have an extensive natural wine menu mm -hmm. with the pizza and you can tell it's been planned to be paired with the pizza and I just, I haven't seen that in any restaurant in Nashville. I mean, you can get natural wine, but not, not like at a place like that. It right. just doesn't exist. So it's really, you know, yeah. The only place in town, I, I mean, if there's somewhere else, like, like let us know, but I mean, that, that's all I know of. Yeah. Well, we, the, he uh, brought out a pizza that was uh, mozzarella and cheddar, uh, bacon, pickles, pickles, with like a sriracha type and then sauce. they drizzled sriracha on this thing and it was unbelievable i've never had anything like it before in my life i haven't either and i the haven't been able to shut was, up about it oh, at, at trader I, joe's I've, I've been actually telling been everybody dreaming about it i have too and i can't wait to go back to i've Dicey's been thinking about like the first bite pizza. yeah so they do like a tavern style yeah party cut party cut yeah and from what tj and charlie said they're both from chicago well charlie said that you know if you are from chicago this is actually the style of pizza that people that are from there really eat like deep dish 
Um, it of course is from Chicago, but he said the people that are native and live there, they eat the tavern style party cut. And, um, yeah. So, I mean, they don't label themselves as a Chicago style type pizza or anything like that. But, um, I mean, it really was all about just the ingredients on this pizza, mm-hmm. but you still bite in and you get that crust. It's not like it's non-existent. Yeah, but they're not doing like the crust around the round right. pizza. Not, yeah. So you're not getting a lot of bread. bread. It's like, and what we you're said in the podcast, pizza. everybody's winning in that situation. Uh, Everybody, yeah. the piece that you get, you get a lot of the ingredients on stuff like this big piece of bread. So the, mm-hmm. pi- the pizza that we had was the hot pickle bacon cheddar and charlie picked that out and charlie picked that out along with we had the greek salad and that was phenomenal Ooh, like the dressing yeah. just was so good and i mean they had these big chunks of like pickled artichokes and like mm-hmm. a lot of edge a lot the of veg in there with the salad the and dressing was delicious loved it um but they do margaritas they do old fashions they do they have beer they've got a great beer list they also do which we loved to hear Beer and shot combos. Mm -hmm. So along with your beer, like your Budweiser, you can get a Nelson's Greenbrier shot of bourbon. um, Or they've got like four different uh, beers and shots, which I think is really cool. But the whole environment in there is just super cool. They got a patio out there with a ping pong table. Uh, umbrellas. So in the summertime, you and I are definitely going to be out there. I mean, I've already talked to people at work and been like, I want to go, I want to go there every month. I yeah. mean, I really, it's, it's, it's a destination type restaurant. And we've even said it's hard to find restaurants that like we want to go back to over and over and over again. Yep. Like that one experience with the food and the natural wine. I mean, I loved the wine. We're going to get into talking about the wine because seriously, it was just amazing. Um, but that experience was like, I, I want to come here on the regular basis. I want this to be like a regular restaurant that we go to. Right. Yeah. The wine was really, really nice. Like uh, Kels was saying, it it was natural wine. Um, We tried this one called Il Mastro. I'm going to go through them in order. Yeah. In the order that we tried them. Um, so the and Charlie f- picked these out too. And Charlie so. picked these out. So, um, the first one is done by field recordings. It's called Tang and it's a paquette. Mm. Um, and very a, light, yes, low light, alcohol, refreshing. It's made with rehydrated skins from well, from skins. So a lot of people actually call it wine tea a lot of the time. Yeah. And if you could have heard Ch- Charlie talk about this, it's a second pressing of the skins. So they add water to it. They press the skins again. And that's what they make paquette. That's that's paquette. Yeah. So um, they kind of think of it like they turned water into wine. And mm. like, yeah. Um, I can see that. Yeah. Paquette um, is so it was a way to meet the needs of the people during the late 1800s wine blight in France by taking the press skins and rehydrating them with well water. Mm-hmm. You create a low alcohol tea with all of the leftover flavor bound up in the dried skins. After after repressing the skins, seven days later, you get a light, refreshing, low-alcohol drink. Um, they add a little a little of our of their finished table wine for acidity and stability in this bottle, in particular, the Tang. The leftover sugars and native yeast then go to work giving the finished wine a light sparkle. And we both um, said that this, yeah, it was, so it's lower alcohol, a lot of... Um, Charlie brought this up too that, uh, and this is true because we've gone to a lot of vineyards and talked to um, winemakers and one of their go-to drinks after being in the vineyard all day, all day is often a beer. Mm-hmm. And this almost has like a beer-like quality, beer quality to it too because it. it's the, the lower in the alcohol, yep. dry. Um, but it yeah. It had a beer finish to it too, mm-hmm. which was nice. Yeah. So um, what was the next one? I really, I really, really liked that one. Um the next one, let me get it up and find it. Well, I know we did that Il Monstro, which was the rosé, which that's they, the third one we did. Yep, that was considered a um, a pet nat, uh, which was a pecorino riesling blend, and that was really really nice and refreshing. Um, yeah, that was actually like. That, so that was my favorite one out of the four that we tried. That was the third one we tried. We'll talk about the second one. That one, it, you know, it's a sparkling dry rosé. 
um, it's 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 kind of sometimes with these natural wines, they're more of like this like frizziness to them. That's why they call it like a frisnet or something like that. Like that's in a lot of. Well, don't you think? Yeah, so? Yeah, I mean, it had like no, a there's there's sparkling, effer, effer but there is a little bit of a it. difference in the effervescence yeah. than like a big bubble. Like they're yeah. tighter, smaller bubbles yep. for sure. And this one was organic too, which made it. Really, I seriously really nice. was obsessed with this rosé. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, and it was just so good. Like I could. I don't know. I could just drink it. Yeah. And that one you can get uh, only by the bottle there, but it's really, really nice. It's $65, I think, is the bottle price there. But the uh, rosé was a nice pairing with the, with the pizza. I sure. kept going back to that bottle like mm-hmm. over and over and over again. And it's a fun bottle. It's got like this like mer- half mermaid, half, I don't know, like squid <laughs> thing. It had all these like different like, like mermaid, tentacles yeah. coming out of it i mean looking at a picture right now it has a skull and then oh horse ho- hooves coming out of it horse hooves horse hooves um i love the look of natural wine bottles too because a lot of them have like they all the, stand out well and they have um a lot of them have like the the, the screw like the top what do you mean what do I, what do I say bottle cap yeah that has those on it um Oh, the Lambrusco. The Lambrusco Ooh, was the yes. that was the second one that we tried, right? Yep. Or was it? The, I don't know. Either way, know. mixing it up. Yeah, the Lambrusco um, that Charlie picked out was really, really nice. So, if any of you don't know, Lambrusco always just pairs excellent with Italian food, especially pizza. Um, it's just got this like deep red. Anyway, it's great with pasta dishes, with. cured meats, matured cheeses. It's definitely like fizzy in the mouth, on the mouth, and crisp. Lots of acidity. Uh, it's really drinkable, super food friendly. I love that wine. Yeah. What was the other one we tried? I can't pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> try it. You know, I love when you try to pronounce wines. Oh, uh, I really can't. Well, what Pepino? was it? Pepino. What kind of wine was it? It was a it was a um, Garnacha, right? Carnig. Oh, Car- Carnegan. Car- yeah, Carnegan. Yeah. Yeah, Carnegie. Um, it's the Apua Pin- Pipino. I think I'm saying it right. Um, it's a really rustic wine. I felt like it was. It was really, really, really like just felt like really old worldy wine, don't you think? It was really good with pizza too. Super smooth. It was just a smooth, smooth wine, smooth yeah. red. All the wines that he picked out didn't overpower anything, so they really paired nicely with everything that he chose. The Greek salad, the dressing, the, the spiciness with the pizza, mm-hmm. um, it all complemented each other very nicely. So yeah, all of I felt like all of them were very smooth and drinkable, and just easy for anybody if you were to take a friend in and like have them try some of these wines. They were all just easy to drink i kind of felt like mm-hmm. even if you yeah. like you're not into natural wine or if you haven't tried natural wine yet i feel like this would be a great place to kind of test that out seriously you could go to dicey's and just drink the wine just get a bottle of wine and chill i but definitely you're get gonna that rose. want the rose to with order the food girl <laughs> you're gonna want to order food oh they definitely. do subs up till 4 p.m every day um the pizzas like i said just really really sounded awesome so we're gonna go down the menu the last name of that wine but (laughs) well yeah so definitely nashville check out dicey's pizza i know it's got a huge buzz already they just had a huge write-up by someone that came through oh yeah yeah i gave it seven out of seven and he actually picked a bottle too of wine that he liked because it had a whale on it it he likes whales whales, so now they can't get the wine anymore so We had an unbelievable time with Charlie. He was a wealth of knowledge. And I mean, he oversees like 13 restaurants in uh, the Nashville, Chicago and Austin area. And uh, it was a pleasure and an honor to sit among him. And I'm sorry that it, the podcast turned out the way that it did there. And we didn't walk away with more footage that we could have used, but we're trying to make up for it to let you all know to check out Dicey's. Take your friends. For sure. Tell Go everybody there, hang about out. it. And like, seriously, you're totally in for like a good time and highly, highly recommend getting some natural wine and some pizza. And if that's not your jam, there's other things for you there. Yeah. So check out Dicey's and uh, that's all we got tonight. So that's it. All right. Cheers. Cheers.